Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Brakakwadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Yahweh, be in the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashem, meaning in the name of Yahweh Shai, be in the name of Yahweh's only begotten Son and our Lord and Savior, also who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahashem Brakakwadash, meaning in the name of the Holy Spirit. The bondage to the elders and apostles of great millstone and shall belong to the hopeful elect that scatter abroad to the four corners of the earth, which are you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, and shall belong to you speckled birds and Israelite foreigners that scatter out in other nations that look like other nations but are in fact Israelites. And the topic of this lesson is going to be for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed the right. And what made me want to get into this lesson is because you know uh you know a lot of times when you know you talk about the end of the world you know you tell people that we are in the end times you know they off the rip think that you know the whole world is going to be destroyed you know they think that everybody's going to die you know you know humanity is going to you know seek cease to exist and you know that's false you know that's not what the end of the world is according to the scriptures you know uh the end of the world you know is just simply you know dealing with you know, an end of a certain time, all right? You know, an end of a particular rulership, you know, so to speak, all right? You know, hence why, you know, I named, the t named this lesson what I named it. You know, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it, all right? Because ultimately that's what the end of the world is. You know, uh, Esau, Edom, you know, being taken out of rulership, taken out of power and Jacob, being placed in power, you know, which is why it says Jacob is the beginning of it that followed, right? The beginning of the world to come, you know, the rulership, you know? So, you know, the end of the world, you know, it's not dealing with, you know, uh, the whole world ceasing to exist, you know, the whole planet Earth being destroyed, you know, everybody dying, so on and so forth. You know, that's not what it is, you know, because even when you read the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, you know, it tells you that the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Shai is going to be on earth. You know, letting you know that the earth is still going to be here. All right. The end of the world is just simply dealing with, you know, the end of a particular time or uh, the end of a, you know, a rulership, you know. So through the spirit, you know, I'm going to bring out some scriptures dealing with this topic. You know, Lord willing is not too long and Lord willing, you brothers and you sisters are edified. All right. So to begin with, you know, I want to start with Second Edris chapter, you know, uh, seven. And let's read verse, uh, start at verse 42. And it says, he answered me and said, this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Therefore have they prayed for the wicked. Verse 43. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of immortality for to come where incorruption is past, right? So the day of doom, you know, when, you know, World War Three pop off and this place is destroyed, you know, it's going to be the end of this time. All right. You know, the end of Esau Edom's rulership and the beginning of immortality for to come, because we know once, you know, uh, the elect is delivered, you know, redeemed out of this place known, Bab known as Babylon the Great. You know, when Yahweh comes back to the, uh, redeem the elect, you know, we're going to be immortal because we're going to be changed. All right. You know, that's why it says the beginning of immortality for to come. All right. You know, because we're going to be living forever. You know, the nation of Israel is going to be living forever. You know, we're never going to die again. All right. So from here, let's go back to the second address, chapter six, and let's start at verse six. All right. And it says, then did I consider these things and they were all made and they all were made through me alone and through none other by me. Also, they shall be ended and by none other. Verse seven, then answer I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? All right, let's continue. And he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Right. So this is going back to Genesis 20, uh, chapter 25, you know, dealing with the story of Jacob and Esau. All right. Esau Edom, you know, which is so-called white man, you know, so on and so forth. You know, he came out first. All right. You know, in the scriptures, uh, in uh, Genesis chapter 25, it talks about how the elder, 
you know, was supposed to serve the younger, all right? So, you know, Esau Edom came out first and Jacob came out, you know, holding on to the heel of Esau, letting you know that Esau Edom, he's really supposed to be serving us, all right? You know, but due to our disobedience to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, you know, breaking the law, statutes, and commandments, all right, you know, we're serving our enemies, you know? So let me go ahead and get into that. Let's go to Genesis chapter 25. And let's uh, read, let's start at verse 21, all right? And it says, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Verse 22, And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Verse 23, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. All right, two manner of people meaning they're different, you know, in uh, personality, so on and so forth, the way they conduct themselves, you know, all of that. Let's continue. And one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. All right. So whoever comes out first, initially, they're supposed to be serving the younger. All right. Let's continue. Verse 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Verse 25, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau, right? So this is, you know, giving you a description of Esau, all right? And it says he came out red all over like a hairy garment, you know? And, you know, when you look at the so-called white man today, you know, he isn't white, you know? He doesn't like, he doesn't look like a piece of paper. You know, he's red, actually, because, you know, his blood shows through his skin because he has no melanin. All right. And also, when you look at him, when you look at the so-called Caucasian race, you know, the so-called white race, they're very hairy. All right. So this is giving you a clear description of, you know, Esau Edom and who he is today. All right. You know, let's continue. Verse uh, 26. And after that came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob and Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. All right. You know, so and just to point out, notice how I didn't describe Jacob because he looked normal like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? But Esau, he came out without any melanin. He was red and hairy. All right. He looked different from everybody else. You know, letting you know that, you know, who Esau is today. All right. You know, but the whole point is that, you know, Jacob, you know, uh, that Esau came out first. You know, and Jacob was holding on to the heel of Esau. You know, what we just read about in Second Ezra chapter 6, you know. So, and, you know, we, as we just read, you know, the elder is supposed to be serving the younger. All right. So Esau, Edom, he's supposed to be serving us. You know, we're not supposed to be at the bottom of society. All right. And he's not supposed to be at the top, you know. But due to our disobedience to how about Shemiah was shy, you know, we were placed in a position to serve our enemies. All right. You know, so uh, let's go ahead and get that. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 47. Matter of fact, let's read verse 15 first, all right? And it says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, thy power to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee, all right? So if we didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Shem Shai, this is a list of curses that will come upon us, all right? So let's jump right to the point. Verse uh, 47. Uh, no, verse Salakia, verse... Uh, Yeah, verse, yeah, start at verse 47, and it says, Because thou servest not the Lord thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, and for the abundance of all things, all right, because we didn't serve the Lord, you know, with joyfulness, you know, we, we didn't uh, serve him, all right? Verse 48, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee, all right? And this fits, you know, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man to a T because that's exactly what Esau Edom 
has done to us all right you know but um the point being it says therefore y'all thou shalt serve thy enemies which the lord shall send against thee all right so that's why you know uh, esau edom he's not serving us right now as he's a, a really supposed to be you know we're serving him instead because you know we broke the law statutes and commandments of yahweh bashim yahweh shai all right you know and some of you may say oh well how's the so-called white man our enemy you know this that another well the scripture says he is all right let's go to uh psalms 83 you know all nations outside of the nation of israel you know there are enemies but our main enemy is uh esau edom all right so let's read psalms chapter 83 and let's start at verse 2 and it says for lo thine enemies make a tumult and they hate and they that hate thee have lifted up their head verse 3 they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and have consulted against thy hidden ones verse 4 and they have said come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of israel may be no more in remembrance all right so these nations they took crafty counsel all right you know our enemies as just stated in verse 2 all right they took crafty counsel you know against thy hidden ones you know the israelites all right to you know cut us off from being the people all right uh let's continue verse 5 for they have consulted together with one consent they are confederate against thee all right now we are finna get the now it's finna name who the enemies of israel is all right verse 6 is the point and it says the tabernacles of edom and the ishmaelites of moab and the hagarines all right but the point is the tabernacles of edom which is esau all right you know so you know as uh deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48 says you know we will serve our enemies you know and according to psalms 83 esau edom is our enemies all right so you know again you know that's why you know we we are serving esau instead of him serving us you know because we you know uh we went against you know yahweh bashim was shot so on and so forth you know we didn't keep the law statutes and commandments so you know we're serving out our punishment you know but a big shift is getting ready to come you know very soon and you know that's going to be the end of the world esau even being taken out of power you know and us being put in power you know but um you know i want to get job chapter 9 and verse 24 you know to pr further prove you know that esau edom you know is you know the so-called white man and he's the one that's in rulership right now so let's get job chapter 9 and let's read verse 24 all right and it says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked he covered the faces of the judges thereof if not where and who is he all right so the earth is given into the hand of the wicked you know and then it goes on to say he covered the faces of the judges thereof you know so when you you know you look at a lot of these uh pictures you know of the prophets in the bible you know the the depiction the modern day depiction of you know who of uh of yahweh or jesus you know so on and so forth you know who the world ignorantly calls jesus you know they're portrayed to be so-called white man right so this is what the scripture is going into it says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked into the hands of the wicked he covered the face of the judges thereof right meaning you know he made the prophets in the bible you know the judges look like him all right so but point being is that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked and who is the wicked esau edom according to the scriptures you know let's go to malachi chapter one and this is going to show you that esau edom is called the wicked all right Lord willing, you brothers and you sisters are following where I'm going with this, you know, but um, I just want to bring this out to show you that Esau Edom is the so-called white man and he's the one that's in power right now. All right. So let's go to Malachi. Chapter one. And let's start at verse one. And it says the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi verse two. I have loved you, said the Lord, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, said the Lord, yet I love Jacob. Verse 3, and I hated Esau. All right, so that's to you Christians that think that the Lord, you know, loves everybody. All right, he hates Esau, you know. And a lot of you Christian alikes that claim to be in the truth, 
you know, you Israelites, you know, uh, that uh, pretty much try to hold on to Christian ideology, you know, that the Lord doesn't hate, you know, so on and so forth. All right. This, this cuts your doctrine. All right. The Lord hates Esau. Let's continue and lay his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. All right. Now, verse four is the point. And it says, whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. They shall, they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. All right. So, you know, Yahweh Shem Shai, you know, he hates these people forever. You know, but the point is right here where it says the border of wickedness. Esau Edom is called the border of wickedness. So that ties back to what we read in Job chapter 9 and verse 24. All right. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? All right. You know, Esau Edom is the wicked, according to the scriptures. All right. And the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, meaning they're in rulership right now. All right, so all of this is really tying together. You know, Lord willing, you brothers and you sisters are following, you know. So, you know, as I already stated, you know, the end of the world, you know, uh, is really dealing with, you know, uh, rulership, right? You know, uh, Esau, Edom being taken out of rulership, you know, and us being placed in rulership, you know. So from here, I want to get Daniel chapter 2. And let's read verse 44, right? And this is going to let you know that this is just simply dealing with rulership, all right? So this is Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44, and it says, And in the days of these kings shall, shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to a other people, but it shall be shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. All right. You know, so, you know, the kingdom, you know, Yahweh Shem Shai is going to last forever. All right. You know, and it says, uh, and the kingdom shall not be left to another people, meaning, you know, rulership, you know, power is not going to be left to these other nations anymore. All right. Esau Edom, he's not going to be in power anymore. You know, once Yahweh Shai comes back and set order in his place. All right. So that's one scripture letting you know that, you know, it's just simply dealing with rulership. You know, the, the whole world is not going to be destroyed, so on and so forth. All right. You know, just rulership is going to be taken away from Esau, Edom. Let's go to Daniel chapter seven. And let's start it. Uh, let's start at verse 12. All right. And it says. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Verse 13, And I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Verse 14, And there was given him dominion, all right, dominion re means rulership, and glory in a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, all right? So, you know, once Esau, Edom, you know, is taken out of power, you know, the kingdom is going to be given over to, you know, the son of man, you know, Yahweh Shai, all right? You know, his dominion is going to be an everlasting dominion that shall not be destroyed. All right. And his dominion is going to be here on the earth. You know, let's continue. Uh, verse. Verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of the of my body and the visions of my head troubled me. Verse 16. I came near unto the unto one of them that stood by and I asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of these things verse 17 these great beasts which are four are four kings which shall arise out of the earth verse 18 but the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom 
forever, even forever and ever. All right. So, you know, the saints, you know, being, you know, the Israelites, according to uh, Psalm chapter 148, you know, I believe, you know, let me see if I can find it. Salaki. All right, yeah, Psalms chapter 148 and verse 14, and it says, He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord, all right? So those saints, you know, that was spoken of in Daniel chapter 7, you know, it's dealing with the Israelites, all right? You know, the saints of Yahweh Bashim Shai is going to take the kingdom. All right, let's go back to Daniel chapter 7 and um, verse 18. And it says, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. For Salaki, like forever, even forever and ever, all right? You know, meaning, you know, the saints of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh are going to be the ones that's in rulership here on earth, all right? Let's uh, continue. Let's go to, let's jump down to verse 27, all right? And it says, And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, all right? Letting you know that the kingdom is going to be here on earth. You know, that's why it says under the whole heaven. Whose kingdom is everlasting kingdom and all the means shall serve him and obey him. All right. So once Esau Edom, you know, is taken out of power, you know, rulership is going to be here on earth. All right. You know, under the Israelites, you know, starting with Yahweh Shai. All right. So ultimately, that's what the end of the world is. You know, it's not, you know, the whole world being destroyed and humanity ceasing to exist. You know, it's just Esau Edom being taken out of rulership, all right? You know, as stated in 2nd Ezra chapter 6, you know, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, all right? You know, so let's go to Matthew chapter 6, all right? The Lord's Prayer. Because this shows you that, you know, the kingdom of Yahweh, of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, the kingdom of heaven is going to be here on earth, you know, which also lets you know that, you know, the earth is still going to be around, all right? So, uh, this is Matthew chapter 6, and let's start at verse 9. All right, and this is the Lord's Prayer. And it says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Verse 10 is the point, and it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. All right, so the kingdom of Yahweh by Shem Shai is going to be here on earth, you know? Now, let's just continue it out. Let's just finish the Lord's Prayer just uh, for edification purposes. Verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Verse 12. And, give us our, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. But verse 10 is the point showing you that the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Shai, the kingdom of heaven, is going to be here on earth, all right? You know, the whole world is not going to be destroyed, you know? Humanity is not going to cease to exist, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, the end of the world is just simply, you know, dealing with, you know, a time period or rulership, you know? Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed, all right? So I want to get Revelation chapter 11. I'm going to close this lesson out. <laughs> so this is Revelation chapter 11. And let's start at verse 14. All right. And it says, The second woe is past. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. All right. You know, this is dealing with the world wars. You know, because the scriptures talk about, it prophesied about three world wars. World War One, World War Two. And World War III is on the horizon, all right? You know, we're just approaching very quickly. Verse uh, 15. And the seventh angel, and the seventh angel sounded. There were a great voice 
So like, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Hamashiach, and he shall reign forever and ever, all right? So that lets you know that, you know, the kingdoms of this world, you know, here on earth, you know, it's going to become the kingdoms of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right? You know, and he shall reign forever and ever, letting you know that, you know, the kingdom of heaven is going to be here on earth, all right? You know, new rulership is coming, all right? You know, starting with Yahweh Shai, then on down to the 144,000, the joint heirs, you know, and the rest of Israel, all right? You know, new rulership is coming. You know, that's what the end of the world is. Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed, all right? So, as I already stated, you know, Lord willing, you brothers and your sisters, you know, uh, you followed me throughout this lesson, you know, and Lord willing, it was edifying. So, as always, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweshai, Bahashem Rechakwadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and Shalom to you brothers that's out there pushing this truth and sincerity. Shalom.